Hi, I'm Will Smith. Welcome back to Citizens Forum. It's still September 25th, 2019, and my guest today is Molly Kay, and she has a special project that she's been working on for quite a while, and she's here to explain that to us. Welcome to the show, Molly. Oh, thank you, Will. Tell us about your project. Well, uh, <laughs> it's really fun to talk about because um, you can see by the way I'm dressed um, that I turn out every Tuesday. So to me, turning out means putting on the clothing that is um, most sort of special and eye-catching and, and gives a sense of um, a special occasion without being formal. So this is just, to me, getting turned out is just sort of wearing what used to be called your Sunday best or your work clothes. But it's from a specific era or? Well, I am channeling, tonight, I'm, I'm channeling a little bit of the early 50s. Okay. Um, and my, my kind of sweet spot is anywhere between about 1950 and 1962. Um, and to me, this era of clothing and this aesthetic represents sort of the last hurrah from the time when people got themselves together to leave the house and do errands. Uh, mm -hmm. So a woman would wear an outfit like this to the grocery store. It was not considered especially fancy to dress this way, but by today's right. standards, it is a real happening. And so what, what do you do? Would you go out and you talk to people? Well, yes, I, I hit upon this wonderful discovery um, that I have a way better time uh, when I interact with people uh, that I've never met before. I just have a, a much more um, elevated mood. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to be uh, more reassured that the world is actually a good place. Um, I can tell that my emotional health is really bolstered by having incidental social contact with people. And I've, I've always known that about myself. And I, I've always tended to be someone who was willing to chat someone up in the lineup or give a compliment you know, out on the street. Um, but even I started to sort of shrink away and shrink away and shrink away from these opportunities in my life. And, you know, I noticed that I just started to get a bit more reserved and rusty at it. Um, and I just happened to have an excuse to dress up in all of my vintage clothes finery uh, at the Moss Street Paint-In this summer. Oh. A friend of mine runs the Victoria Vintage Fairs. And she had a stack of her postcards for her September fair. And she said, Here, would, you know, maybe you could hand these out. I said, oh, I'll do better than that. I'll dress <laughs> up in a way that nobody can ignore. Uh, I'll wear the hat, the gloves, and the handbag. And that way, everyone will know that I'm not just sort of rocking a vintage style. I'm, uh, I'm on purpose. So it'll be easy to hand out the cards and say, come to the vintage fair. Well, I had the best day I've had in so long. And people were chasing me down the street to tell me how much they loved my outfit. And I just felt so uplifted. And I said, why the hell don't I dress like this more often? Just because, you know, what? I have a collection of bits and bobs that are kind of, you know, vintage looking. I used to sing with a group called the Millies and we did 40s and 50s repertoire and we all had matching 50s outfits. And so I thought, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start wearing this more often, but nope, I need to make an official commitment. So I was speaking with a gentleman uh, at that art fair and I said, right now, I'm gonna tell you one day a week for a year, I'm gonna turn out. I'm gonna wear this stuff and I'm gonna talk to people and I'm gonna just have so much fun with it. <laughs> and whatever I'm doing, I'm just gonna show up like this and it'll be what it is. Well, I've gotta tell you that Turned out Tuesdays have become my favorite day of the week. It's very hard for me to limit it to Tuesdays now because <laughs> it's just so much fun. And I didn't have very many women's hats from this era. Uh, that was sort of the, the, the weaponry in my arsenal that I was missing. And so I started to seek out women's hats and then all of a sudden they started to find me. So <laughs> people would come and they'd say, oh, You're, you like hats? Well, you have to come to my house. I've got my grandma's hats, or oh someone gave me their collection of hats. These should be with you. The, you need these for your project. So this hat that I'm wearing came from my friend Carolyn, 
she invited me to her house and she must have had a hundred hats. Oh my gosh. And I went home with 40 of them. And, and there's just <laughs> not enough Tuesdays in a year. So I, maybe I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. I don't know. Maybe you need to have some other people involved. This would be kind of fun to come into the store and see more than one person. Well, see, th this, is, this is where you've hit upon the fact that I'm, what I want is for more people to experience the good stuff that I'm getting out of this. Now, they don't have to turn out and head to toe June Cleaver like I'm doing <laughs> um, with the hat, the gloves, and the handbag, although that helps. That helps uh, researchers who study the benefits of incidental social contact with what they call weak social connections, like the barista at the coffee shop and the person who's oh, yeah. you know uh, at the checkout counter. Um, that they say there's a couple of different elements that are really helped along by a hat in particular. I just happened to figure this out. Eye contact. Mm -hmm. So once someone's noticed my, you know, funny hat, I have their They're eyes. They're going to look at you. Yes. yes. And so once I have their eyes, I can smile. And there comes the second part of the equation, permission. So part of why we're so terrified to talk to each other is we just don't feel like we have permission to talk to someone we mm. don't know. Maybe since childhood we were told the strangers were dangerous as well. But really, we're surrounded by people who are equally hungry for connection. Yes. So a smile, eye contact, and then um, often I will make the first foray and just say, oh, wow, I love the color of that shirt. That's so unusual, Will. That's, it's, you know, it, it's not just your typical white shirt. It's kind of peachy. I like it on you. It looks very handsome. Yeah. So I'm just more inclined to engage with people that way when I'm turned out myself. It's like the difference between schlumping around in your pajamas at home and putting on an outfit. You, you probably, if you work from home, you're more productive if you put on an outfit. I find, let, let's just take it up a level. Let's, let's actually get turned out and go about our day. Well, I'm curious about, um, maybe you can lead into uh, a deeper, a little bit deeper meaning on this because I, we just watched a movie last night about the 50s that one of the scenes or one of the storylines is from the 50s and the basic idea is that everybody was looked really good but inside not necessarily so much and, and uh, that, that era is when I'm, my, I was born in the 50s so uh, this, this particularly resonates with me in that you know my parents looked like that and I was raised during that time and now in 2019, it's a lot different. So people are not wearing the same uniform. So maybe you could talk about that a little bit. What was, what's going on there? Yeah, I interviewed uh, a fashion professor from NYU uh, as part of my project. Oh. I'm, I'm actually writing a book about this. Oh my I'm so gosh. fascinated by what I'm discovering about what impact this has on my social experience of and my life. And this is just since this summer? So yeah, I just started just, in, you in just July. Started. So this is a new project. That's great. It's a brand new project, and already people will sometimes spot me and say, are you that Tuesdays lady? <laughs> so I love it. I love it. This is the good side of social media that I'm actually yeah, able to get people talking about this issue of social isolation, loneliness, um, how, uh, the way I put it is the cure for loneliness is right outside your door if you just choose to interact with the people around you. Yes. Now, as, as far as what the 50s represent, uh, I didn't live in the 50s. I was born in 68, so I missed the whole show. But um, what I say about the constraints that were put on um, people in, in that era in terms of what they wore, and, and this is what the fashion uh, professor was saying as well, that it was actually, there was a lot of clarity in terms of what roles people played in the community based on what they were wearing mm -hmm. and, and what hats they were wearing. Yes. You know, like we use that metaphor when we say, oh, someone does a lot of different jobs or they play they a, lot a lot of, of roles or they contribute in a lot of ways. What do we say? We say, well, they wear a lot of hats. That's true. Um, hats are highly symbolic. And when Jack Kennedy took off his fedora in 1960 or 61 and liberated everyone from this idea that you had to wear a hat in order to be a gentleman or a lady. Um, I think, you know, certainly there were people who reacted to that negatively and said, oh gosh, the whole world's going to hell in a handcart. <laughs> but overall, when we look back on all of that, we think, great, women don't have to wear girdles, they don't have to wear hats, they're not constrained, there's no uh, judgment if you decide you're gonna wear pants, uh, you know, that this is a good thing to have choice about how you express yourself. Mm -hmm. But in any, 
in any moment of change, there are gifts and there are losses. There are things to celebrate and there are things to mourn. And I think people are starting to come around to the idea that when anything goes in terms of attire that we wear when we're just going about our day, that something has been lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that sense of ceremony and specialness and, and also to be seen. And I, I think we're terrified of being noticed, but we're dying to be seen. And so when I challenge people to wear something comment worthy, I can tell how much consternation there is in that. And yet in the 1950s, when women wore hats like this, yeah, you were gonna get noticed. Uh, in fact, this is a pretty tame hat. Uh, to me, it feels like I'm a parade float, but <laughs> this was just a, you know, this is pretty subtle as far as 50s Yeah, there's no went. fruit piling up on top. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what about, um, you mentioned, uh, well, the, the energies and the, the feeling of uh, goddess or sacred, some, some kind, I guess you're trying to bring back that sacred, that feeling of this, everything is sacred, everything is special, instead of just, so, um, so do you wear any other, any other particular type of clothing, or are you sticking with this pretty much, the 50 to 62? Yeah, there's something about this particular aesthetic. I find it very flattering. Uh, I find it to be flattering on a lot of uh, people, you know, m men and women both just look lovely. Uh, it's a, it's a very, it, it, it flatters the body in ways that I think wearing, you know, yoga pants and a very low cut t-shirt doesn't do. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a prude, but I really love aesthetics, and, and I have a fine arts degree, and so I just appreciate um. the, the collage that I put together every Tuesday. It's not assiduously historically curated or anything like that, but it, 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 it just works. gives a feeling. It evokes a mood, and inside of me, it calls out what I think of as this sort of divine feminine energy, which is the generous spirit, the, the okay. person who is there to help and, and comfort and, you know, and be the, the sort of spirit of kindness. And so I'm much more generous, I find, when I dress this way. I'm much more helpful. I'm much more, you know, on the hunt for people doing kindnesses for others. And I call it out and I say, oh, that was lovely the way you helped that woman pick up those oranges. I just love seeing that. Uh, thank you. And then they turn and they look at me and they say, wow, what's going on with you? <laughs> We've only got a little time left, but what is your, what is your book going to be about? Well, I, this awareness uh, of this? Yeah, I'm, I'm, so, I'm such a nerd and I love talking to researchers. So this whole issue of, you know, loneliness and isolation are killing us. It has the same negative health effect as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. What are we going to do about it? Oh, that's right? great. I say, hey, good news. Just talk to the people who are all around you every day. You know, like it's that simple. Uh, you don't need to join a club or start an activity or host a dinner party. You know, you can just chat that person who's standing next to you in the lineup at the grocery store. And life is better for everyone when we do that. If you wear a hat, it's easier. So that's my message. <laughs> Molly, that is so great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I'm going to try doing that myself. So Thanks thank for you having for me being on Citizens Forum. Thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.